We shouldn't do that. We shouldn't do that. If you're compromised by too much sin, it's too much. And, and that's another thing that, that we're not very good at teaching young people about. You know, we shouldn't do that. You know, it's like there's a sanctimonious authority that goes along with that that's the wrong tone. It's more like You know, I don't know how you lay it out properly, but you tell people that you love how to avoid the road to hell. And you don't do that because you're shaking your finger at them or because you're a moral authority. You do it because you don't want them to burn. And I think there's too much of the moral authority still in the church and not enough of the, you know, the love that helps people avoid the fire. If you want to be a Christian, let's say, if you think that's necessary, it's not exactly obvious what you should do. You should go to church, but that's not enough, I don't think. I find it useful to contemplate the highest good on a continual basis. I'm trying to keep myself oriented in that direction. That's a, it's a religious orientation, fundamentally. It's an overwhelming orientation. But there's no escaping the questions of the ultimate meaning of life. Who would have the audacity to claim that they believed in God if they examined the way they lived who would dare say that to, to believe, you think, to believe in a Christian sense, to actually, this is why Nietzsche said there was only ever one Christian and that was Christ, to have the audacity to claim that means that you live it out fully. And that's an, that's an unbearable task in some sense, to be able to accept the structure of existence, the suffering that goes along with it, and the disappointment and the betrayal, and, and to nonetheless act properly, right? To aim at the good with all your heart, right? To, to dispense with the malevolence and your desire for destruction and revenge and all of that, and to face things courageously and to tell the truth, to speak the truth and to act it out. That's what it means to believe. That's what it means. It doesn't. It doesn't mean to state it. It means to act it out. And unless you act it out, you should be very careful about claiming it. And so I've never been comfortable saying anything other than I try to act as if God exists because God only knows what you'd be if you truly believed. I mean, if you think about it in some sense, that's the central idea in Christianity is that if you were capable of believing, it would be a transfiguring event, a truly transfiguring event. And I know people experience that to one degree or another, but we have no idea what the limit of that is. And we have no idea what the possibility is within each person if they lived a life that was maximally courageous and maximally truthful. You know, because maybe you're running at 60% or 70% or 20% and at cross purposes to yourself. God only knows what you'd be if, if you believed. And so, while I act, I try to act like I believe, but I'd never claim that I manage it. Sometimes, the objective world and the narrative world touch. You know, that's union synchronicity. And I've seen that many times in my own life. And so in some sense, I believe it's undeniable. You know, we have a narrative sense of the world. For me, that's been the world of morality. That's the world that tells us how to act. It's real, like we treat it like it's real. It's not the objective world, but the narrative and the objective world touch. And the ultimate example of that in principle is supposed to be Christ. But I don't know what to, that seems to me oddly plausible.
Well, I still don't know what to make of it. It's too, and partly because it's too terrifying a reality to fully believe. I don't even know what would happen to you if you fully believed it. A wing and a prayer, or the enemy. This has to stop. God lift from me the intolerable burden of my ignorance, arrogance, willful blindness, bitterness, and resentment. As I pray that others rise above the same faults and temptations. I watched Fox News release a message this week. There are terrible things afoot under the surface of our society, and the perpetrators are coming for you and coming for us. And then I watched the Democrats respond in panic and anger, saying, there are terrible things afoot under the surface of our society, and the perpetrators are coming for you, coming for us. Are there terrible things afoot, bubbling under the surface? Is something coming for you and for us? Ask yourself how true that is of yourself and your own life. Have you addressed all that? Are you concerning yourself with the dust in your enemy's eyes instead of attending to the filth that obscures your own sight? Do we want accusation, suspicion, discord, derision, and hatred? Or the peace and prosperity and happiness that beckons to us at this moment like never before? Who's the enemy here? Is it the basket of deplorables? Is it the freaks and the queers? Is it the plumbers and carpenters and tradesmen and managers who work honestly and diligently during the day and the soldiers who stalwartly defend the borders and protect us? Is it the artists and visionaries whose expressions of unbridled creativity entertain and rejuvenate us and who continually offer to us an unending panoply of technological miracle? Is it the institutions that guide and protect us that so many lived and died to erect and establish, which for all their faults have served us so well? Do we want revenge or justice? Do we want contempt or mercy? Do we want war or peace? And what are you aiming at in your heart of hearts? I see even the best of men degenerating into the exchange of blows. I see even the best of men identifying the enemy in our neighbors and friends. I see even the best of men falling prey to cowardice and self-righteous anger. It needs to stop. I need to stop. You need to stop before it's too late. Who is the enemy here? The snake in your heart? The lies on your tongue? The arrogance of your intellect? The cowardice of our refusal to see? The enemy is that which divides to sow discord. The enemy is the pride and the fear that stops us from lending a hand across the divide. The enemy is the great and eternal adversary of mankind. And if we demonize our brothers, our comrades in arms, do we not precisely call that dread spirit forth? Have we not yet learned? Courage. Trust. Truth. Love. 
even unto your enemy, which is yourself. God, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. May what is highest guide our vision. May what is highest open our ears. May what is highest guide our tongues. And may we pray, fearful of the hell we could so easily and carelessly create. Deliver us from evil. Shine a light into the corners of our dark hearts. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.